Hey there, swim fans. Welcome to a very special edition of Whiteboard Wednesday, because in this video, I'm sharing with you everything swimmers need to know about the coronavirus. In this video, we're not only gonna talk about what the coronavirus is, we're gonna answer the question if it can spread in a swimming pool. We'll talk about some simple best practices to keep yourself safe and healthy. We'll also talk about a few different options if your swimming facility and pool happens to close during this time, what you can do to stay in shape, a few different dry land, activities and we'll also point you in the direction to learn more about this virus as we have more information available to us make sure you check out the link in the description below to stay fully up to date and make sure you're subscribed if you're new to the channel welcome to my swim pro where we share the latest and greatest to help you improve your performance and health now in this video it's specific about the coronavirus let's get right into it first of all if you've heard and read any of the articles you might be wondering yourself what exactly is the coronavirus it is a large family of viruses, and we've seen this before in different forms. Every couple of years, there might be some sort of an outbreak like the one that we see today in 2020. We've seen SARS or um, MERS before. And the coronavirus, actually at a molecular level, if we break it down, it's this envelope of genetic material. And on the inside, that genetic material is actually the RNA. That's what that purple squiggly thing is. And then it has protein spikes on the outside of this envelope. And the shape, it actually looks like a crown. And crown in Latin is actually called corona. And that's how we have the name coronavirus. That's how these things are named. You might also see it as COVID-19. It's another way of saying the same thing. It's the coronavirus. Now, the novel coronavirus was first reported in Wuhan, China in 2019 at the end of the year. And now it is spread to potentially hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions. So it's important that we stay up to date, but not panic so that we're well educated. Now it can be something like a fever if you have symptoms. So fever, cough, shortness of breath, potentially similar to the regular influenza. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine yet. And as we learn more information, we'll be able to update it in that link in the description below. So the biggest question that people ask us is can the coronavirus be spread in swimming pools? Does this mean you can no longer swim? And I believe the answer is no, you can still go swimming. You just need to be more aware of what you're getting yourself into. So chlorine may be able to deactivate the coronavirus. Now I put a box around may because what does that mean? Is that not 100%? So it may because not all swimming pools are actually chlorinated to the same level or chlorinated at all actually. So chlorine is a chemical in a lot of swimming pools and it's designed to kind of kill things like the uh, novel coronavirus. But if your pool doesn't have chlorine or it's not chlorinated enough, there's a chance that it could actually live at the swimming facility. But I would argue that the more important thing to consider here is that not all uh, not everything is happening in the swimming pool. So you might actually be infected through the pool deck, swimming equipment, right? All of these different objects on the pool, whether it's the door handle or the pace clock or anything like that, can carry germs, can carry something like the coronavirus. So it's really important that you're not thinking about it just from a water perspective, but you know, if you leave your house, you're increasing your risk no matter what. That doesn't mean stay in your house and lock your door, close your windows and hide from the rest of the world. That's not what I'm saying. If you go to a swimming pool, you're potentially just as likely to contract corona as you are going anywhere. So don't think that the water is any more likely to transmit this. And we have a quote here from Professor Wang, Professor at Duke. He's also on the World Health uh, Organization Committee for the coronavirus. And he says that transmission of the coronavirus uh, through the swimming pool is unlikely unless the person is swimming very close to an infected person. So it's not like the water is any more contagious if someone's been in the water who has the virus and then the next day someone else goes in the water, they're automatically going to get it. That's not really how this works. Some tips for avoiding the coronavirus. Now these are standard hygiene measures. So there's nothing here that's actually new or shocking that I'm going to be presenting to you. And it actually is applicable for just staying healthy in general, but I'm going to run through them really quick because it's nice to have a refresher every now and then. The first one is to cover your nose and mouth when you cough or sneeze. So if you feel like you're going to sneeze, don't make sure you <laughs> make sure you don't uh, infect everyone within a 30 foot radius of you. You know, cough and sneeze into your elbow if you have a sleeve, if you have a mask, if you have anything, just cover it up. Make sure you're not infecting other people around you. 
Number two, avoid close contact with those who are not well. So if you see someone coughing up a lung or someone just sneeze, it's probably best not to go and you know give them a hug and then wipe your face, right? So keep your distance from people who are sick Wear the standard precautions if you're in the healthcare industry, you know your stuff. Number three, wash your hands regularly with soap. So washing with water will not disinfect and kill the bacteria and the germs. Make sure you're using soap. I put a box around that. Next, avoid contact with animals and wash your hands after. So animals, you know, similar to a human, they can carry a virus. So if you don't need to touch any animals, don't touch the animals. If you happen to have a pet, make sure you wash your hands after hanging out with your pet, right? Similar, you know, basic best practices here. Finally, stay at home if you're feeling unwell. So if you feel ill, don't go anywhere. <laughs> stay in your house, you know, contain yourself, self-contain, and keep it to your own surroundings. Seek medical attention early. So if you are sick, if you are coughing up a lung, you know, hopefully it's before you cough up a lung, you seek medical help, or if you have shortness of breath, you know, think about it, call your, your medical doctor, I'm not a doctor, so that's full disclaimer. Seeking this YouTube video will not get you any help beyond some comfort, so make sure you actually seek professional medical help if you have any of these symptoms, but that doesn't mean run to the ER as soon as you sneeze. Um, and finally, stop touching your face. It can be really, really tempting for my friends with a beard to stroke your beard, touch your eye, touch your face. Just don't do it. Don't touch your face. Keep your hands down. Keep your hands down. And I have finally here, avoid travel to high risk countries. And the CDC Center for Disease Control actually has a list of different risk category countries. If it's non-essential travel, you don't need to do it. It's non-essential for a reason. So don't do it. If you need to go somewhere and it's not a high risk country, go ahead, hop on the plane. But I, ex I <laughs> implore full caution, make sure you pay attention to everything we just talked about, keeping yourself hygienic, washing your hands. And if it's not essential travel, don't do it. Now, what if your pool closes in all this chaos and you don't even have access to a swimming pool to work out in the first place? What do you do? Well, I will tell you, no pool means no excuses. So just because your pool closed doesn't mean you can't get a workout in. Yes, you might not be able to fully submerge yourself in swimming, which has fantastic health benefits. Make sure you check out the Whiteboard Wednesday, 10 awesome health benefits of swimming. And also the Whiteboard Wednesday, what happens to your body when you swim, which has some cool molecular diagrams, way better than this one. But here are some strength and conditioning ideas to do at your house. And even if you can go to the gym, same best practices, you know, wipe everything down, keep yourself hygienic. But if you can't go to a gym, you can't go to a swimming pool, there's a number of different exercises that you can do at your house, in your home, you don't have to go anywhere and you can stay in shape for a relatively long period of time and get your cardio in even if you don't have to, you can't run or go outside and cycle. There's a lot of things you can do in your house. So I will talk about compound movements. These are movements that engage multiple muscle groups at the same time. For example, a bicep curl is an isolation movement. It'll get you a nice cannon here on your arm, but it won't necessarily work your entire body and increase your metabolism, which is what you want if you wanna either lose weight or develop your overall strength and conditioning that'll help you in swimming or in life. So compound movements would be something that engages multiple muscle groups, something like push-ups. Planks, planks is a great way, core exercise, your body's flat. Or squats, right, you're using legs, big, big muscle groups, a lot of blood flow. Or doing pull-ups, pull-ups are great. If you're interested in learning more about different strength and conditioning activities that you can do in your house without any equipment or at least a little bit of equipment, check out the Whiteboard Wednesday Dry Land for Swimmers. It has a number of different workouts and exercises. These will be linked in the description below that you can follow to get a great workout in even if you don't have a swimming pool. I also recommend checking out the TRX Suspension Cable Series. We have 30 different movements that you can do with TRX cables. So, you know, suspension cables, everything from your core, your lower body, your upper body, strengthening your shoulders, injury prevention, super important to work on. And then we have a video series on medicine ball exercises. These are great. It's a very simple piece of equipment. So we don't have to go to the, the gym and buy anything that you'd like, but no swimming pool, no excuses. Check out these three different whiteboard Wednesdays on how you can maintain your strength and conditioning without having a swimming pool at all. And for more information, like I said, check out that link article in the description. We'll be updating that as we know more. But also check out the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, 
Also check out the Center for Disease Control CDC, which has that list of different travel locations at different risk levels. And I want to stress the importance here that the coronavirus knows no national, religious, race, or financial boundaries. Everyone is potentially at risk. And this is just a reminder that we are all one big family. We need to look after each other, whether it's the coronavirus or any other virus or disease. It's important to look after each other. And especially, I implore you to look after our elders, people over the age of 50, 60, 70, because not only are they potentially more susceptible to contracting the coronavirus or any other form of illness, but so far we've seen that these individuals have a harder time fighting the coronavirus. So if you have elders, make sure you look after each other, especially over the age of 60. And this is a reminder that we are all one big family. Look after each other, stay safe, and check out the link in the description so you can stay updated. Wishing you well.